from dreaming of owning your farm to making it a reality, starting a farm with no money can seem like an impossible task, but it's not. So don't worry, you won't have to dress up like a scarecrow and talk to your plants. I've got some practical tips for you to start your own farm. Nothing screams fun like reading through legal documents, am I right? But hey, before you start your farming enterprise, it's essential to make sure you're not breaking any laws. After all, orange might be the new black, but it's not a good look for a farmer. Check with your local authorities and make sure you have all the necessary permits and licenses as starting a farm can be an extremely challenging but rewarding endeavor. So if you're still considering it, I highly recommend gaining some work experience before jumping in because trust me, growing some plants ain't an easy task. From learning how to care for livestock to effectively managing a farm, hands-on experience is invaluable and can help you avoid making mistakes when you eventually start your farm. Another benefit is that you can confirm whether farming is truly what you want to do, because farming can be tough. You'll be up early, working in the hot sun, and dealing with all sorts of unexpected obstacles. But hey, at least you'll get a great farmer's tan, am I right? Obviously, one of the most important things to consider when starting a farm is the land. You don't need a huge plot to start with, but you do need to make sure it's suitable for growing crops or raising livestock. Let's face it, not everyone has access to a sprawling plot of land to start a farm, but that shouldn't stop you from pursuing your dream of growing your vegetables or fruits and starting a commercial patch. One of the best ways to start is in your backyard or front yard. You can start small with just a few raised beds or containers and gradually expand as you grow more confident and gain more customers. And if you don't have a garden of your own, don't worry. There are plenty of people out there who would love to have a vegetable grower tend to their garden in exchange for some fresh produce. As your business grows, you can start spreading to more gardens and building your enterprise. Who knows? Before long, you might even be supplying the local farmer's market with your fresh homegrown veggies. Now that you have secured land, it's time to get some tools and equipment. If you're looking to save money on seeds and equipment, try attending a seed swap or equipment swap in your area. It's a great way to meet other farmers and get your hands on some high quality, affordable supplies. And speaking of equipment, you don't need to go out and buy the latest and greatest gadgets. Sometimes all you need is a good old pair of work gloves and a shovel. Plus, it gives you an excuse to channel your inner cowboy or cowgirl. You can even try to borrow tools from friends or family or check with local organizations or churches to see if they have any tools that you could use. Just don't forget to return them, or you may end up on the blacklist of the local tool sharing community. Let's talk about the other members of your farming team, the animals. You can start with a few chickens or goats, which are easy to care for and can provide eggs, milk, and meat. Just make sure to give them plenty of love and attention. Some cities and some states, etc., they just don't allow for it, so you need to figure out if regulations allow you to keep chickens in the first place? Sometimes the answer is yes, but you have to jump through a couple different hoops. And yes, that includes talking to them. Trust me, they won't judge you for it. And speaking of judging, don't worry about what others think when it comes to choosing your crops. Let your imagination run wild and have fun with it. Want to grow a rainbow of colorful fruits and vegetables? Go for it. Want to try your hand at growing exotic crops like kiwi or passion fruit? Why not? But before you start planting, make sure to consider the soil type, climate, and growing conditions when choosing your crops. You don't want to end up with a bunch of sad and wilted plants because you planted them in the wrong season. So once again, my plant folks, do your research. I'd suggest that you start with easy to grow crops like tomatoes, peppers, beans, and lettuce, which are in high demand and can sell quickly. Plus they're perfect for making some fresh salsa to celebrate your first harvest. Woohoo! Once you have established a customer base and business is booming, you can consider adding more crops to your farm. You can also experiment with different varieties of the same crop to see which ones grow best in your area. Who knows, you may even discover a new superfood that everyone will be raving about after you post about it on your social media. Marketing your farm is another important step to becoming a successful farmer. You can start by creating a website or social media account to showcase your farm and products. Just make sure to get some nice photos of your produce and animals. While the seedling preparation is going on, 
In the field, these workers will prepare the soil and raise the beds to be ready to welcome the thousands of strawberry plants that are about to be brought here. And avoid using filters that make your cows look like unicorns. Yikes, you don't want people swarming to your farm for the wrong reasons. Instead, you can participate in local farmers markets or sell your produce to local restaurants and grocery stores. Just don't forget to bring some samples for the store managers to try in order to build connections. They may even become your biggest fans and recommend your products to their customers. And speaking of connections, it's essential to continue learning and growing as as a farmer. Mingling with other farmers and agricultural organizations can help you promote your farm and connect with potential customers. Who knows, you might even make some lifelong friends who share their passion for all things agriculture. But it's not just about making connections, it's also about learning from others who have been in the game longer than you. Yeah, about 55,000 workers flock to strawberry farms in California to work, and they are mainly from Mexico. Don't be afraid to ask for advice or tips on how to improve your farming practices. There's always something new to learn, and the farming community is always eager to share their knowledge and experience. And who knows, you might even be able to teach them a thing or two. ...of ground that gets plenty of sunshine and that has well-drained soil. They might not look like much now, but these grow into absolute whoppers. So if you're planting more than one plant like I am, leave about three feet or a meter between plants. At the end of the day, you'll also need to be prepared for the unexpected. Bad weather, crop failures, and animal illnesses are all part of the farming experience. As with any venture, it's important to have a backup plan and a support network in case of emergencies. And don't let the fear of the unknown hold you back from pursuing your farming dreams. That's when we start to notice some damage in the, in the crop. So then we start biting for that. This oak crop would yield 30 tonne from this 10 hectares. A bad year, we're gonna get nothing. So we'll call it 15 tonne of oats. Starting a farm with no money is not easy, and it's possible with hard work, determination, and a little bit of luck. Just remember to stay calm and think on your feet. And if all else fails, just blame it on the chickens. And don't forget to have fun with it. Take some time and appreciate the beauty of the land, the sound of the animals, and the taste of a fresh tomato straight from the vine. So if you're ready to take the leap and become a farmer with no money, go for it. Frost. Just dig them up, dry them off, and then store them in exactly the same way as potatoes in a cool, dry place. Just don't forget to invite us over for some fresh produce and a farm tour. We promise not to scare the goats too much.